And joining us now, without further ado, is Congressman Steve King. Uh, and we're delighted he's joining us from Iowa, I believe. Congressman, how are you? Good to see you. Doing just fine. Right in my living room, Laura. It's terrific. Oh, well, great. I appreciate great. you taking the chance to be on tonight and, and your monologue. <laughs> All right, let's talk. <laughs> Next time. You've been out yeah, in my neighborhood before, and I appreciated that. Fantastic. Let's talk about the president's uh, plan. Uh, the four pillars of it were announced uh, late yesterday. Uh, it's a change from a week ago where it was 800,000 uh, DACA recipients would have a pathway eventually to citizenship. Moved on from that to 1.8 million. Kept the other elements basically in place, Congressman. An end to chain migration. Uh, 25 billion for the border wall and security, which is good stuff. Uh, and uh, the visa lottery system would be kind of replaced, uh, would be used, those 50,000, to end the family and merit-based backlog of legal immigrants who've been applying and waiting for years and years. Uh, tell us what your biggest concern is with this, and could you ever support an amnesty that would lead to a reduction in legal immigration? You know, I haven't seen the plan that would get me to support again amnesty um, under, under any of these circumstances, but I do recognize the value of the Goodlatte bill, which now looks like this proposal blocks. And the, but the numbers are just stunning to see that President Trump has proposed 1.8 million amnesty to illegals. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm very familiar with his immigration policy. Uh, I actually I told him one day that the market tested your immigration policy in Iowa for 14 years. And that's the reason that he's president of the United States today. I think that this will demoralize so very many of his supporters. And how do we get back now to a place where we need to be with this? And, and by the way, he had a mandate to end DACA, a mandate for a wall, a mandate to end chain migration, a mandate to end the visa lottery. We can go on and on with this. And why they're matched up against each other, negotiating against himself, is very troubling to me. And I think that seeing the Democrats turn against it, the one thing he's accomplishing is he's convincing the American people of the real truth, which is Democrats don't care about solving this problem. They want this problem to exploit it politically and to bring more and more people into the United yeah. States that will be on their side of the political ledger. I mean, I do think he has exposed them. You know, it's not the plan I would want. And I, I'm, the, I'm for the good lap bill. I think that would be a great, you know, a great path forward. Uh, but let's oh. listen to what Mercedes Schlapp said. I, I should say before we play it, we invited any White House official onto the show tonight. We were told we were going to have one, and then they pulled him at the last minute. So I, I want to hear oh. from the White House on this. I'd like to interview the president on this. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously he just came back tonight, but ho uh, I, we hope to have someone on on Monday. But let's listen to what Mercedes said uh, from the White House earlier today. Let's watch. Clearly, it needs to be a bipartisan bill. If we would clearly have a 60 votes with Republicans that would support this, it would be a lot easier. We are not, in, the Congress is not in that position. So this is why you need a compromise on immigration. But clearly, from the standpoint of the White House, it is clear, as the president has said time and time again, there needs to be a wall. If there is no wall, there is no DACA. Congressman, your response. It has to get to 60 votes in the Senate. Well, Good lap bill would be dead on arrival. Number of senators told me that today yeah. would not pass. Uh, so what do you say? Well, the best part of that statement is no wall, no deal. We must have the wall. The most important reason we need to have the wall is because walls don't have prosecutorial discretion. Even a subsequent president will have a hard time tearing but down a wall. But you get the wall in this deal, in Congressman. You get the wall in the deal. You end chain uh, migration. Chain migration mm -hmm. is 400,000 people a year. So in four years, five years, you would have more than the 1.8 million amnesty of, of new family-based migration that's gone. So in five years, you would already in, you would already swamp that 1.8 uh, number, exceed it, and the cuts would still keep coming. So I don't see that you're going to get a cut in yeah. legal family chain migration without some sort of amnesty. Maybe not this big, but without some sort of amnesty, well, I just don't see it. Well, here, Laura, here's what this establishes, though. If the president serves up 1.8 million people for an amnesty in exchange for $25 billion for a wall and then reduces the numbers of, of chain migration that come in, 
that's the end of his enforcement that he's going to get in his in his administration unless we come up with another amnesty to serve it up because he will have established that precedent. And by the way, this is a sacrifice of the rule of law. This says in your lifetime or in mine, we will never see the respect for the rule of law restored again. And that's what I've been working at since 1986, when this mistake was made then by Ronald Reagan. Oh, really that lessons there in front of us. It's the same debates. And uh, it's a I debate today is the same as it was in 86. It hasn't changed. Now, a, a rule of law has got to be respected. I completely agree with you on that. Let's just very quickly, we're almost out of time. This is what some of the left-wing advocates have said today in response to 1.8 million. Listen to this. The White House, yeah, the White House released a hateful, xenophobic immigration proposal, the ACLU. Uh, the uh, Huffington Post writer, it's a little more than a racist ransom note from a group of nativists. America's voice, they think they're offering up a spoonful of sugar. They can get Congress and the American people to swallow the bitter medicine of uh, radical nativism. United We Dream says, let's call this proposal what it is, a white supremacist ransom note. Now, come on. Uh, they, the, the, the left is so over, o, over the top in the response. Mm -hmm. Trump has exposed them as fanatics. And I, I, my listeners are enraged. I can tell you that, Congressman. They, they are just, they can't even believe what they're hearing. Yep. But the practical understanding of all of this is you don't have 60 Steve Kings in the Senate. You don't have 60 Steve Kings who mm -hmm. are going to vote for cloture on an immigration proposal. It's just not going to happen. It, I wish we did. I wish we had but more they people that do... believed in the rule of law. Uh, and that's, that, and that's, I looked around here uh, a week ago, Laura, go. and, uh, and I had a hard time finding anybody. Now that coalition's growing. So thanks a lot for doing this tonight. I appreciate it. All right. We appreciate it. And by the way, uh, Congressman, we could be on the verge of a stunning game changer in the Russia investigation. But the forces aligned against President Trump are fighting back.